we have an absolute treat in store. Today, it's Chef Ebers against Chef Kush, who are gonna be cooking from ingredients taken from Chef Slater's fridge. This is chef off. It is, try chef. You chef off. Okay, boys, let's have a look at what you'll be working with today. Well, that looks fun. Yeah, obviously, you can have all of that for yourself. Bottle of Riesling. Oh, rhubarb. Wow, smoked cod's roe. It's a chefy <laughs> set of ingredients for sure. Brown shrimp, lovely. A piece of a lamb, looks like breast. Breast, uh, eggs. Really old spring onions. Is this him just binning all the stuff he doesn't want? <laughs> Greens, salad for Jamie. Burke 35. Barcher cheese, Barcher is it a blue, possibly? Type More cheese. Whoa, what's that? What? 60 white corn tortillas. Great. Okay, then we've got some other kind of stuff, some sort of sour sauces, some tahini. Uh, Cling film. Some London ale. Plastic cheese. Now, this could go anywhere, because there's some really bizarre stuff, like <sighs> pork fat. What? Oh, You're both holding the pork, pork fat. fat. I've got, got oh. lardo. Tonkotsu sauce. IPA as well as a lager. There's a lot oh in this bag. God. Preserved lemons, regular lemons. Okay, so overall, how are you feeling about this eclectic set of ingredients? Uh, well, who are we cooking for, Mike? You're cooking for Barry, who is oh. going to blind taste test this and choose a winner. Well, that worked last time. We literally so, ran out of people. Uh, I'm not confused because it is Slater to a T. It's almost too much choice. Yeah, that's the, usually the case. It's like it could go in so many different directions. Who knows? So you guys have got an hour to cook up something using as many of these ingredients as you wish. We want something absolutely delicious. Should we get cooking? Let's do it. Yeah. Okay, chefs, you have an hour on the clock. You have your fridge ingredients in front of you and access to the sorted store cupboard. Begin your cooking in three, two, one. Right. Right. Both gone to the lamb. Both gone for the breast. These eggs are tiny. Are you sous vide eggs? Yeah, because Barry's eating them, isn't he? And he loves an egg. 40 minutes at 64 degrees, you get that soft poached style egg without any worries. And because we've got an hour, if I start it now, it should be done. We've gone full chefy within the first 10 seconds of cooking. So me and Ben have both gone for lamb breast or lamb belly. Luckily, I cooked with this uh, last week. Talk to us about this cut of lamb. So it is called breast in the shops, but it's the same thing as belly. So imagine pork belly. Same cut, just from a smaller animal. And then brisket or short ribs, it's the same thing. So you've got all the durations of fat, meat. Is it a challenge to cook in an hour? Yes, that is a challenge. There's an instant pot behind me, so this lamb might go in the instant pot. I haven't yet decided. But if I cut it into strips, I can marinate it, season it up, and then cook it as quick as possible. I'll help make that decision for you, Kush. I'm sealing that instant pot. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll do the other quick cooking method by deep frying it. Oh, he's colouring it. So I'm going to give the lamb a little bit of colour in the pork fat. So I think the challenges here are balancing three things. The ingredients that come from one chef with my approach to cooking, but to feed Barry. <laughs> and putting those three together, I think I've got an idea. I just don't know all the component parts of that idea yet. Give us a top line, Ebers, what are you thinking? So we know that Barry likes the meat-fruit combo. Mm. So that's what I'm going to do. One of his favourite dishes he ever had, so he claims, was a parsnip date and lamb dish. Now, we haven't got parsnips or dates, but we have got lamb. Where else can we go with that? Rhubarb. rhubarb. So kind of like a lamb and rhubarb -y spiced, slow cooked, although I'm going to have to do a pressure cooked dish. Sounds amazing. Uh, Kush, it's only right that I inform you that you've set the sous vide machine to 43 hours and 57 minutes. Oh, you. I'll use the timer on the oven so I know how to use that. Kush didn't get much sleep last night, so I think we're going to see quite a performance. Uh, right, I'm going to make lamb sausages. Oh! Because I was recently inspired by the newsletter that helped write uh, for Sorted Foods, uh, where we did skewers. So I'm going to make some lamb sausages. So by grinding the lamb, I'm going to cut through all of those tough intramuscular fibres, all the collagen, and break it down so your mouth doesn't have to chew it. Ah! I might do a full English. So I'm just grinding up some garlic, ginger, chilli and coriander for the middle of the sausage, or attempting to in this little machine. Uh, then I'm going to grind that and put that in with the lamb mince that I'm going to make. So Ebers is doing a pressure cook, which means he needs to get it on nice and quick. So I've seared the lamb and I'm adding it to the pressure. Oh, shut up. <laughs> in here with onion, garlic, the coriander stalks, I'll use the leaves later, 
beer because you need the wetness of the cook and some rhubarb for that kind of tart sourness. It's going to need about half an hour when it comes up to temperature, so it must go on now. By cutting the meat into strips, it goes down into the auger, which is the spinny thing, gets caught and forced through. So you shouldn't have to use the plunger. Little tip. Normally, I'd put this in the freezer for 20 minutes to firm up. It stops the fat and meat emulsifying. But, time. So that hasn't ground much, so I'm gonna put the herbs through the grinder anyway. So for this, I want three egg yolks and two egg whites. The egg yolks I'm gonna to use to make a custard, and the egg whites I'm gonna to use to make a meringue. It's a very classic dish that I know will play to Barry's heart. It's called Il Flauton, but with ginger rhubarb. And lamb. <laughs> yeah, take a leaf out of your book, as in doing too much. Oh yeah. Yes, Evers. Yeah. Yes. Fight fire with fire. I bought some spices. Okay. Uh, so we had seek kebabs a couple of weeks ago oh, from the newsletter. Unbelievable. I can't do that again because that would be cheating. I know the recipe off my heart. So uh, I'm going with some full bavaria, Turkish chili flake, some spices. Going for like a merguezy style of Mediterranean Moroccan sausage. Smoked paprika, onion, garlic, ginger, some cumin, fennel seed, and some coriander seeds. Salt about a tablespoon because I've got about 800 grams of meat. And then I'm going to beat my meat. So I've got some German Riesling, which is a very dry, zesty white wine. I'm going to use that with ginger syrup, so stem ginger syrup, to create a poaching liquid for the rhubarb that's going to go on the Yves Flotton. I am making ketchup, but the colour of this rhubarb isn't, you know, perfect because it's not forced. So I'm going to pimp the colour with a bit of beetroot. Beetroot rhubarb, sweetness of beetroot, tartness of rhubarb. We've got the tonkotsu sauce out of status fridge, whack that through it, cook it down, blend it up. That'll go under the sausage. So when talking to Slater about why he has these items in his fridge, he likes to have multiple ingredients that go together with each other in flavour profile that can be used in many, many different ways. What are your thoughts? This does seem like a bit of everything and a few leftovers. And then he's scrabbled around and I'm guessing he was really thankful that you said, can you bring in the stuff out of your fridge so he doesn't have to, you know, try and cook with it. <laughs> So this is a stock that I'm going to use later on that's got some rose petals, some rose harissa and a chicken stock cube. So I'm just going to let that kind of infuse and we'll use that later on. The rhubarb is now poaching. Our cream is now going to quickly go into our egg yolk, sugar and vanilla mix to make our custard. Ebers, how are you feeling? Confident? I haven't even worked out what my main dish is yet. It's got 28 minutes in the slow cooker and that's going to be the meaty part. I think I need to serve it with some other stuff but what was interesting with Slater's bag was there's very little veg it was kind of meat and amazing condiments heavy preserved lemons tahini uh, sauerkraut things that have umami punch and flavor bombs but not a lot of body so that's what I need to think about yeah back to Weber's I'm still not sure what I'm cooking yet so I've got a preserved lemon I will chop it up and put it through my lentils how do you preserve a lemon uh, they are packed into salt in jars. The salt draws out the moisture, the moisture dissolves the salt, turns it into a brine, which therefore uh, softens the skin and preserves them. Okay. Lemony, really tangy, really citrusy. You wouldn't drink the brine. I've used it as a seasoning liquid for the lentils with some Mexican jalapeno hot sauce. Best just put through things raw at the end, so that'll live there. Right, uh, I'm gonna poach this rhubarb in the microwave in the beetroot cooking liquid. So we've got spicy lamb sausage. That needs tempering with something else. We need fat to temper it. We need yogurt. There's no yogurt. Dairy, there's cream. I've got some cream if you want it. Yeah, but cream and lamb, it's almost too fatty. Oh, he's gone straight to the tahini. Fat, tahini, pres preserved lemon. Takes us straight back to Middle East, North Africa. Goes blend. well with your spice blend. Goes oh. well with the spice blend. Yeah. Uh, still the eggs. Oh, eggs are fatty. That'll temper the lamb and I'll deep fry the lamb. That'll temper so the fat. How are you using, because you just said that double cream is too fatty to go with the lamb, but you do want fat to temper the lamb. I want a bit of lamb. fat, but I would like yogurt, something uh, sour Almost cream. sour. Yeah, yeah something sour or sour or double cream, but so high in fat, I think we'll end up putting Barry in an early grave. So uh, <laughs> we're going with the other thing that is pretty much pure fat, but... It's got a different flavour profile. It's got a different flavour profile. It's got the bitterness. That'll go well with the sweetness of the rhubarb, see, I'm learning as I go. Preserved lemon, tahini dress, lentils, cooked out in uh, white wine and jalapeno hot sauce. <laughs> rhubarb ketchup, 
it's like verbal diarrhea. He's he talking out loud. Has, <laughs> you do realize we're going to edit this. It's not live. <laughs> that's fine. It's fine. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Are they cooked? No idea, chef. I need the microwave. Oh, sabotage from Ebrel. Can I join you in the microwave? No. It needs a minute. No. Okay, I'll balance it on that. I might cook it in time. I've done one for test because I wasn't sure how long it's going to take. I think that was a bit too much. Ooh, right level of sweetness. There is so much going on here. So I've drained my rhubarb beetroot mixture. I'm going to put it in the blender and add enough liquid back to it just to get the right consistency. And where's this going to go? Under something. So we know that Barry's kind of come synonymous with cloud eggs, but we've done them so many times, I don't think he really even likes them. One time is too much. However, a little nod to that, as in a floaty, cloudy thing, that's why I want to do the meringues on top of the custard with the rhubarb. So it's kind of a nod to it, but without ever going near it. So I've mixed that tahini preserved lemon cooked lentils with some frozen peas to try and make a bittersweet dressed pea lentil salad thing. Has it worked? I should have defrosted the peas before, but I think I'll adjust it later because I don't know where I'm using it. So far, this video is not going well. Boys, you've had over half your time. You have 28 minutes remaining. Excellent. Excellent. I think my only fear, having recently done Barry's dream menu, is that he does like volume and that's not what this is going to be. There is a temptation when you've got all these lovely ingredients to throw enough mud at the wall and something might catch his attention that he likes. Oh, you're thinking like a normal Ebers. But I think I want to keep it nice and proper and delicious and thought through. Hence we've got the fatty lamb with the richness of the beer as kind of like a stocky thing, which hopefully I'll have time to reduce once it comes out of the pressure cooker. But the salad is fresh spring onions, coriander, preserved lemon, and that kind of rose harissa. Wait, are loves. you cooking your Ile Flottante in that? No. I'm so confused. Don't worry. I'm currently doing contingency texture. I don't even know if I'm going to use it, but some of these wonderful corn tortillas I've fried off in the lamb fat that I seared off earlier. So I reclaimed that pan, couscous, fluffy. Now I'm going in with spring onions just to take the edge off that and the preserved lemon. So those eggs are cooked. Good. Maybe I could do a taco. Yes, 15 minutes left. Now's the time for a brainstorm. See, look at this. Use the lettuce to basically clean the pan, get all the flavour out, sear it off, and then a splash of wine, and it will just quickly braise down. I mean, both dishes look, smell, and seem fantastic. And I'm still baffled about what they are. Talk to us about this cheese. It's Burkswell. So if I'm right, probably not, don't hold me to this, is a sheep cheese. What's the flavour profile? It is nutty. Uh, little caramel hints in the background. Can have a bit of bitterness to it now and again. So being sheepy, I think it'll go quite well with my lamb. Sorry, Chef. <laughs> Noise. Whoa! Yay, I love this bit. Ten minutes remaining. Ten minutes, right. I'm going to deep fry my lamb. That looks lovely. OK, lovely roll, but because we haven't got time to press it, it's now going to uncurl. That's unfortunate, but it's a time pressure thing. you got this, Ebbers. Kush, what are you doing with this egg? I've got some time, so I'll make mayonnaise. English mustard, nice and punchy. I might use it, I might not. A bit of hot sauce. I'm going to use a bit of the vinegar out of the capers. My rhubarb onion mix is more on the sour side than the sweet side, so I've added a little bit of honey. It's all starting to come together. How long? With five minutes and 43 seconds remaining. Mayo. That is such a good technique. Oh, lovely brown sauce. These won't be cooked through. Oven on low to cook through. Oil off, frying pan on. Five minutes remaining. <laughs> Slater is in the building. Slater, no, not now, all right? So we're going to crack our eggs. So what have you done here? So I've cooked them at 64 degrees for 40 minutes. And now I'm going to pan fry them. Because I hate that sloppy bit you get on a wet egg. Whee! You're pan frying eggs? Pan fried poached eggs, yeah. So you get the texture of a fried egg, but all the gelatinous beautifulness of a poachy. The eggs are done as I wanted them to be. Come on, chefs, you got this. It's plating time. I've made a puddle of custard. Beetroot ketchup. 
Capri lentils, peas, tahini, capers, preserved lemon, grilled lettuce. How long? Two minutes remaining. Beetroot, vinegar, poached, rhubarb, lamb, and a guest style sausage. He'll never guess that this is me. So this is earth for chili flake. It's a really fruity, soft, mild chili from Turkey. 20 seconds remaining. Just for the views, I'll wait. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Stop cooking. That's a bit of a mess. Oh, you did go for one plate. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I mean, these look fantastic. Let's get them into the sexies. Nice well done. done, boys. Well done. Baz, you are in for a treat. Oh, I can't wait. Lift cloche A. <laughs> Seamless. <laughs> Perfect Barry action. Whoa, okay. Spiced lamb sausage, egg rhubarb, gem peas and poi lentils. Okay, have a look at what's under cloches 2 and 2.1. <laughs> oh! Lamb and rhubarb, Moroccan taco. It's amazing. Rhubarb and ginger, Floating Cloud Island. Someone has been playing to my taste buds. Well, dig in, mate. Give us your thoughts. Looks very fine dining in style. Lots of very chefy on it. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Okay, right. Mmm. Holy moly, the sausage just has incredible fragrance and spice coming straight through. Love that ketchup. Homemade ketchup or have a bottle? Can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> One of you is very offended. Savage. But it's tangy, it's sweet. I adore my eggs, but I've never had an egg like this. <laughs> Having the crispy bit of the egg on top of the egg and the bottom is unusual, but I really like it, especially with a lot of black pepper on top. Rhubarb. This, this is the only bit that doesn't look right. But I can see why it's there. A bunch of things on the play there which I wouldn't have said look like they go together, but taste-wise, really smart. Right. Tacos. Moroccan pork tacos. Lamb. Mm. <laughs> that was quite sophisticated. That is not. That is beautiful filth. Moroccan is one of my favourite cuisines. It's as savoury as it is sweet. A little bit of spice in there. Really Moorish. Never had couscous in a taco. Probably not. Whoa. First appearance, wet lettuce, but it's wet, charred, really flavoursome lettuce. I think that's been doused in Riesling. That'll be it. Right, someone, someone here is definitely plain to me. But that, that second dish is Barry Island. We've I got think it's the official title. <laughs> <laughs> Very niche no. reference. I know. Well, it looks a bit like um, a cloud egg in custard. taking longer than the cooking. <laughs> mm. That custard is so creamy, so sweet, so luxurious. It tastes like a tinned custard that I love. And I can't work out if a chef has done a really good job at imitating that custard, or they've just poured it out of a carton or tin. The, the meringue is really delicate. The rhubarb is zingy with a slight crunch. It's al dente rhubarb. You're gonna have to make a decision, mate. Which is your favorite and who is the winner? <laughs> oh no. Okay, for an overall experience, I have to focus on the thing that excited me the most, which is this dish here. So dish A takes the win. I genuinely have no idea who might played it, and I can't work out if people are double bluffing me or not. The chef who cooked dish A, please step forward. Well done, Chris. Nice done. Let's get in, let's try some. First time I had that egg was at your flat years and years and years ago. Yeah, very long time ago. Well, you've heard Barry's winner. Do you agree? Comment down below. And if you'd like to see more chef versus chef battles in the future, give the video a like. Hashtag justice for Kush. It's time to whap your flip flops out because this summer, Sorted Live brings you the Wild Weekender, a festival style weekend of live stream Sorted Mayhem.
Tickets available now. See the link below for all the information.